Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Balog of the Vancouver Center for Cosmetic and Implant Dentistry here in Burnaby, British Columbia, a suburb of Van Greater Vancouver. Today I'm going to talk to you about CT scans, also known as 3D imaging, and also known as cone beam imaging. It is a tool that's become very widely used and uh, widely available now, in, especially in North America and probably throughout the world, uh, since the uh, cost of the equipment has come down tremendously. And it's been a huge boost for uh, our diagnostic ability as dentists compared to what we've traditionally had with films that we've been using for the last 50, 60, 70 years of these two-dimensional images. A lot of times people come in, take an x-ray of a tooth, it's a two-dimensional image, and uh, we may or may not see something because a lot of times things are hidden. So it gives us a greater ability to evaluate, for example, root canals or whether a tooth needs a root canal. Is there an infection present? A lot of times it can be hiding, it can be hiding in kind of in behind the tooth as opposed to on the side or in the front, which we might see uh, otherwise on a traditional x-ray. Uh, teeth that sometimes have cracks or root fractures we can identify and uh, just so many other things. Mainly today I want to talk to you about how it relates to implant dentistry. For many years with implant dentistry you've had traditional films. That's how I started out. We had a two-dimensional film kind of give us uh, some idea of how much bone volume there was, but all but most of what we could do is, is measure it was uh, height. We couldn't measure width from from the cheek to the outside and we couldn't measure angulation. Uh, it was very limited. So oftentimes we would go and we could we get a rough sense of what the height is. We get a rough sense of maybe what the width is by looking at the tissue. But even then it was a bit deceiving because sometimes the, the tissue could be quite thick and the bone could be quite thin. So there are some ways we overcame that, but it was a little bit limited. So oftentimes we would go in and we would plan for a surgery, do a surgery to put an implant in place. And sometimes we could, we'd find some surprises. We'd find defects in the bone that didn't show up on traditional x-rays. Sometimes we would go in there and find the bone volume, the, the, the height, the width, the length, or the angulation was not as ideal as we were expected. And so then we had to kind of overcome that and kind of um, fly by the seat of our pants, so to speak, and, and either place an implant or do some grafting or do a combination of both. And I must say, it certainly gives you a, a a, a wealth of experience when you do dentistry that way, uh, do surgery that way, because you have to make decisions on the fly and make the right decisions, and and uh, it's 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 an invaluable experience. However, having said that, if we can go into a, a surgery beforehand and know exactly what the volume of bone is, and know exactly what we're dealing with, uh, it gives us a much greater uh, sense of confidence and I can also express that to the patient uh, that this is what's going on that you've got this much volume of bone this is what we can do uh, this is where the bone is limited and certainly uh, we can also plan better as far as where to place the implants how to place the implants and then we can even go one step further to prepare something called a CT guided surgery where uh, the surgery is planned from the point of view of the CT. We have a specific appliance that snaps into the person onto the person's teeth or onto the person's gums and directly guides the position of the implant exactly as we had planned it on the CT scan. It's a little bit hard to explain verbally, so rather than do that, I'm going to go and, and switch to a, a screen record mode in a second, and you can just kind of follow me through as I, as I show you an example on one of our patients. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I'm just going to bring up our software. So here's a, a patient who's uh, missing some teeth on his upper right. So he, up here on this uh, top right of the screen here, you can see a scan of his upper teeth. You can see a little bit of lower teeth, but we're really interested in the upper teeth here. He's got his teeth. This is his left-hand side. This is his right. And over here on the right-hand side here, you can see he's missing about five teeth here. Um, and we want to see if can we put some implants in there. So we take a look at the arch and we can kind of uh, uh, move our cursor over to this area and in this area here we can take a look at it in cross-section. We can see just how much bone there truly is there and we can actually, uh, let me just move that over a little bit, I can actually come along here and actually measure the width. It tells me exactly 9.73 millimeters and it's right down to pretty accurate right down to the millimeter. Uh, tells me exactly how much height, how much width we have. Uh, up in this area here, this is black area. This is the sinus. We all have that. 
what happens when we lose teeth, especially in the posterior, we lose bone due to atrophy uh, from two ways. One, the ridge uh, from the top shrinks, uh, and also the sinus tends to enlarge. We can also look at this on, on, a, on a basically a, a computer-generated model of this. If you were to peel the gums away and see what's underneath, we can actually see the bone that's there or isn't there. And so we can look at, okay, do we have enough bone? Do we have enough volume? And we can do a number of things. So we can come along here, and let me just go along, and we can go and place some teeth here. Uh, let me just get this all done here. So we can come along here, and now we can go, well, this one that moved, moved on me. Um, but anyways, we can place these teeth, uh, some virtual teeth where it needs to go. Let me get this tooth back into the right position where it's supposed to be, somewhere right around there. And so we can now go look at this, and we can we can look at this and say, okay, is this where the teeth need to go? Um, and that looks like an approximately good position for for putting some teeth in there, based on where the other teeth are. We can do this. In the past, we did this traditionally by taking some models and waxing up the models or doing a denture setup. But now we can do it in this way, and we can also take a look. Okay, there's this tooth. Uh, let's say. We'll look at this molar, for example, and we can see in the molar, that's where the molar is. Do we have enough width and do we have enough height of bone? And then we can look at this tooth here, this crown. Do we have enough width? Do we have enough height of bone? And then from there, we can also do some other things. We can go and now we can place some implants. And I've gone ahead and done this just to save some time. We can go ahead and place some virtual implants. And you can see, okay, here are our proposed position of our teeth, our crowns, and then here's a proposed position of the implants. And we can go and take a look at these individually. And so let's start with the molar again. So here's our molar. And we can see there's our crown. If we place our implant directly below it, uh, we've got lots of width, but we don't have a lot of height. You can see this implant is actually sticking up into the sinus. We can take this same, look at the same tooth, and I can literally walk around. You can see this thing as it's spinning around. I can literally walk around this implant and see how is the how much bone there is, how close I am to that tooth, and so on and so forth. So I can literally walk around this and see whether or not we have enough bone. And it's obvious here that we are deficient in bone, and this is not necessarily a very large implant. So we can go one more over, look at this implant here that we've got, and we can see we've got just barely enough width, but we have almost no height. We've got maybe about two, three millimeters of height. The rest of this implant is sticking into the sinus. So trying to place uh, implants here would be uh, impossible without doing some bone grafting. Uh, just as an aside, I didn't mention it. When we're doing implants, we really got to work backwards. It's like building a house. You want to build a house, you come up with a plan, you go to an architect, he draws up some plans, and then you give it to a builder, and then he looks, okay, these are the plans, and he's going to figure out, okay, how is this going to fit into topography? Uh, do we have to dig a hole? Is there bedrock there? Do we have to blast? How is this house going to fit on this land? And that's basically what we're doing here. We've designed where the teeth need to go, size, shape, position, and then from there, that's going to determine where the implants need to go because ideally we want the implants emerging through the teeth and in the middle of the teeth, and then that's going to determine, okay, now we've got the position of the implant. Do we have enough bone there? And we can go to the third uh, implant here. Uh, this has been planned as basically uh, we could have easily done four implants, but uh, for this area, we've planned it with three implants, a single implant here and a three-tooth bridge. We can also look in this area, and we can see that in this area, we just barely have enough bone. If we walk around this tooth, we can see different angles. It's like taking a virtual tour walking around and um, uh, architects and realtors do this now with uh, with houses. Uh, if you go online, if you've ever been shopping for a house, they'll put a camera down and you can sit down in any any part of the room virtually and literally take a walk around. And that's basically what we're doing here. So from here, we can do some planning. Now we can look at it, this and we say, okay, we need to do some bone grafting. And then once the bone grafting is done, we can come back and do this exact same thing and place the implants. And now we should be able to see that after we've done some bone grafting, that we have bone in this area here and we've got enough volume to place implants. 
From there, we can do one more step. From here, we can actually manufacture a surgical guide, what we call a CT-generated surgical guide. This guide will sit on the teeth. If there's no teeth, it will sit on the jaw or the tissues. And with that, it gives us a precise uh, uh, angulation, location, and depth of our of our drills, for lack of a better description, of where we need to prepare the bone, uh, so that we can the guide basically guides our hands, guides our instruments, guides our drills. So we place it exactly where the bone is, and it simplifies the surgery. It takes a lot of guesswork out of surgery, and it also makes uh, the surgeries go a lot faster, especially when we're doing full arches, multiple implants. It helps us to parallel these implants, get them as parallel as we need to, which was not always as easy to do when you're doing it freehand. It allows us to place it exactly where the bone is, tells us exactly if there's any defects, what we're going to run into, and basically it simplifies the procedures uh, in many ways. Uh, there is some additional costs with this, but the benefit far away the costs associated by, by doing this, by taking a CT scan. And quite honestly, if I was having surgery, if you're having brain surgery, would you want necessarily want your surgeon to have uh, to go in blind? No, you'd say, take whatever films you need. I want you to know exactly what you're doing. And this is what we're doing here. Although it's only teeth, it's not brain surgery, it's not heart surgery. Still, uh, if I'm going to have a dentist putting implants, I want him to have as much information as he possibly can have. So hopefully this is a simple little explanation of uh, what CT scans can do, particularly in implant dentistry. If you have any questions, email us and we'd be happy to help you. Thank you.